Back in Liverpool, Alex is in with a broken arm. Really, really yours hurt. And it's bent like a banana. Alex was playing football at school. He was in goal and making lots of great saves, leaping left and right. Then one boy, the strongest kicker on the pitch, took a shot. Alex threw his hands out for a save and the ball crashed right into his arm and injured it. Ouch! So, Alex is having a procedure to fix that bendy arm. If it's successful, he won't need an operation. First, he's given an anaesthetic to make him sleepy so he won't feel a thing. And the team begin the process of straightening Alex's arm. Dr. Vanesh needs to pull the bones apart, then let them join back up again in a perfect fit, just like a jigsaw. First, there's a lot of pulling. We just give a bit of traction. Someone pulled the arms the other side and I pulled it away from the fracture. So we tried and align it together to make it straight. Once they're happy the bones are correctly fitted, the team need to make sure that they stay that way until they heal. So Dr. Vinesh fits a plaster cast. Can you move your fingers? After that's done, Alex is sent to X-ray again to check up on those broken bones. New pictures are taken of Alex's hopefully fixed arm. Hey, it doesn't look like a banana anymore. But is it straight enough to avoid an operation? Just spoken to orthopedics, they're happy with the X-ray and you can go home and we'll review you in a fracture clinic in a few days. Great news! They don't need an operation, no. I'm very really happy about it. And on his checkup, it's still straight. A brilliant result. Bye, Alex. Ouch. We've got some incredible body tricks for you to show your friends. Want to find out how you can stop your mate standing on their tiptoes? We're now going to teach you a trick. Toes on, Stanner. Can you stand on your tiptoes? Look at that. Well done. Suzanne, I want you to stand against the door. And I just want the tips of your toes very slightly beyond the door. Just stand so your whole chest is against the door. Me like that. Stand on tiptoes. Come on, stand on tiptoes. Yeah! No, I can't do it. I can't do it. This spot. <laughs> and it's not just Zahn that can't do it. He can't do it. She can't. And nor can he. Oh, cheating, you move your feet. So you all failed to do it, didn't you? Now, does anyone know why? The door. Being there, you can't go forward and you, you push backwards and stay on the ground. Alex is absolutely right. When you go on tiptoes, it's not just your muscles pushing you upwards, which is easy. You've also got to balance. And to do that, your brain tells you to move forwards, then upwards to distribute your weight evenly and stop you from falling. So if you can't lean forwards, you just fall backwards like that. Or like that. <laughs> We've got some incredible body tricks to show you. Want to find out how to stop your friends moving with just one finger? OK, so guys, come and stand in a ring at uh, arm's length, cos I don't like the way you all smell. So you all have to stay there. I'm going to stop you from standing up with one finger. No, you're not. OK, Zandi, so sit down. OK, now I want you to put your head against the wall. OK, and I'm going to stop you standing up with just one finger there. OK, so now try and stand up. Stand up. So what you've got to do is make sure that your hands are on your knees and you're just using one. <laughs> now, do you think one of you could stop Zahn standing up? Who's the smallest? So why don't you come forward, put the point of your finger like that. Have you got long nails? You'll never, you'll never stop me fighting. OK, now Zahn, never do it. ready? <laughs> it's not just Zahn that can't stand up, though. No one can. You're not going to hurt me, Solomon. You'll never keep me down! You don't really have to be super strong to make this trick work. It's more about balance. Watch what happens when Zahn stands up. Slowly forward, and now he can stand up. So you have to move all your weight over your feet. Sit down. Now, st now stand up. And if you stop him moving forward, then he can't, he can't do anything. Because he can't stand up like that or he'll fall over backwards. Stop it. <laughs> Sorry. So try it yourself and see how you can be a superhero with just one... It's not only teams in hospitals that deal with the unexpected. Wherever you are, if you have an accident, there'll be a medical crew on standby ready to help. We're going on call with the UK's emergency services, heading into the thick of the action to help save lives. Now it's Chris's turn on the front.
front line. This is a rapid response vehicle belonging to the West Midlands Ambulance Service, and it's designed to get a paramedic to the scene of an emergency within minutes. On call with me today is paramedic Ben White. And it's not long before an emergency call comes in. So we've been called to the home of the 84-year-old lady who's fallen over and pushed her lifeline button, and that's a button that she can press that will summon help like us. So at the moment, we have no idea what we're going to turn up and find. We don't know why she's pushed the button. So James has got his camera, and I've got mine, so I can take you with me right to the heart of the action. We don't know how extreme the situation is, but Ben gets there fast in just two and a half minutes. It's vital we get into the house as quickly as we can. The patient could be seriously hurt. Hello, my darling. It's the ambulance service. We're in, and we find a lady called Lottie who's fallen over. What actually happened? I went to the chair yeah. and it was too short and I fell right. on the floor. It was a definite sort of fall, if you like. You didn't black out or collapse no, no, or anything. No, no, Okie no. dokie. Paramedic Ben needs to examine Lottie to check for any serious injuries. Any pain there? No? No, no, okay. no. Any pain down your back? No. Have you got any pain in your hips at all? No. No? no. Should we get you up then? Yeah. <laughs> We're going to pick you up together and put you back on the chair. When you fall over, it's easy to get back up. But as you get older, your muscles get weaker, and that makes it much harder to move. How are you feeling? I feel OK. Not dizzy? No. So Ben's just going to do some thorough checks and make sure that all we have to do here is put her back in the chair and she's safe. At the moment, everything's sort of looking OK. Your blood pressure's very good. Uh, no injuries that we can find. Check Lottie out or sort of observations and everything seem fine. Lottie's got carers that come in four times a day and she's got the pendant around her neck, so if she does become unwell or anything changes, you can always press that and we'll always come back. It's good news for Lottie, but now she's in big trouble with her friend Anne. She tells me off. I tell you off, yes, because you shouldn't have got out of the chair. You're never too old to be told off, is that right? <laughs> I, still, I still get told off. All right then, Lottie, we'll leave you be then, sweetheart. Yeah, right, yeah. Take care, bye-bye. Take care. If someone falls and they can't get up and no one finds them, even for a few hours, that can be really serious. Luckily, Lottie's got the button around her neck, so we were able to be here within a few minutes. Ben's put in the chair and now she's smiling and laughing, and it's a really good result. Thanks to paramedics like Ben, who can get to a scene fast, you'll never be more than a few minutes away from emergency medical care. Now it's time for us to hit the hospitals to show you what goes on. Today we're in the Gates Lab. Walking. Most of us don't think about it that much. But what is it? What affects it? And most importantly, why am I wearing this outfit? I'm here at Alderhey Hospital in Liverpool at a special laboratory, the Gate Lab, and I'm going to get some answers. All walks are different, and your own style of walking is your gait. Gate Lab manager Jill Holmes is here to tell me more. People that come to us usually have something wrong with them. The doctors that are looking after them want to understand what it is that is making them walk in an odd way and what do we do about it. So basically, the more you know about someone's walk, the more that doctors can make decisions about how to do surgery, how to reposition muscles, how to help people do exercises to get them better. In this amazing room, sophisticated cameras and computer technology help create 3D models of your walk. So we will look at them very accurately and we'll describe how they're walking and what they're doing wrong. Yes, but why am I dressed in this ridiculous outfit? So that we know where you are and what you're doing, we have to put little markers on you. Time to put my best foot forward. Let's start walking. Off you go. So I've done my walking, and now I'm going to have a look at the 3D model of me and see what's going on. You have got a normal, efficient way of walking. Is this the kind of walk that a, a really cool person would have, like a movie star or a dancer or something like that? Um, it's, it's an ordinary walk. It's an ordinary <laughs> walk. So, my barefoot walk looks good, but most of the time we wear shoes. Are there any kinds of shoes that are bad for you? Um, yes, there are shoes that are bad for you. Shoes that are too small, or girls tend to wear shoes that are too high. You've got something in a different colour. <laughs> Chris can see me now. 
Jill wants to show me how shoes can affect the way your muscles and joints work. Uh, I'm gaining a bit of confidence now. I think they're quite impressed. But as I discover, it's really hard to walk fast. By looking at my stick figure, you can see that my knees never straighten in heels, which has a big knock-on effect on the rest of my body. So you can see how bad it would be for someone to wear heels the entire the time. time. You'd expect them to have foot problems. You'd expect them to start to have some knee, hip and back problems. In fact, all styles of shoes can affect your body. And no matter what you wear on your feet, it's really important that your shoes fit properly. I've learned that my walk is basically normal. We've also seen how much shoes affect the way you walk. But most tragically, my ambitions to be a catwalk model have been destroyed. Thanks, Jill. We've got loads of amazing body tricks to show you. Here's how to stop your friends from simply moving a leg. I'm going to show you that I can stop Chris using his leg without even touching him. That's how strong I am. Do you think I can do it? Yeah. <laughs> you never. So what I'm going to do is get Chris to put his left foot against the wall. And you want to get it right flat up against the wall, so even the heel is against the wall. And then I'm going to get him to push his ear against the wall, OK? So push your ear against the wall. This isn't going to work. Yeah, How is this going to work? It's going to work really it's well. It's better work. Get your ear right up against the wall there, hard as you can. OK. Come on, Chris, lift your leg. Let's go. Come on. Chris! <laughs> See, I told you it'd work. Chris can't lift his right leg at all. <laughs> OK, can you lot do any better? I did it! I did no, it. your ear came away from the wall, Amelia. Look at you have to keep the ear on the wall. Go. <laughs> so what do you think's going on here? You have to be able to lean to one side to be able to balance, but then the wall is blocking you to lean to one side. That is a very good explanation. Yeah, that's very good, actually. To lift your left leg off the ground, your body weight has to shift directly over your right leg to keep your body balanced. <laughs> but with this trick, the wall gets in the way, meaning your leg can't go anywhere. Give it a try yourself and see if you can impress your mates. We've got some incredible body tricks for you to show your friends. Want to find out how you can stop your mates from standing up straight? Well, we're going to show you. I have an amazing trick to show you. Who wants to see it? Brilliant. OK, Chris, you ready? Yeah, really ready. Right, what I want you to do is go and stand and face that wall. OK. OK, face the wall, mm -hmm. cross your arms across your chest, and then bend over and so that your head's touching the wall. Brilliant. OK, and now try and stand up again. That was rubbish. That was easy. Even these guys are going to be able to do that. Chris, I haven't finished the trick. Oh. OK, bend down, fold your arms, bend over, touch your head against the wall, and now just take one step back now try and stand up. Oh, I'm stuck. As soon as I move my feet back, I, I just can't stand up at all. <laughs> Who thinks they can do a better job than Chris? Are oh, you all think you can do it, can you? Let's see, shall we? One, two, three, go. Uh, yeah. Epic fail. <laughs> she can't do it. It's easy, right? No, oh, neither can he. Good effort, though. <laughs> Nearly. Just. <laughs> so why is it that no one can simply stand up straight? Even I can't do it. It was my idea. Oh. Who can tell me why it was so difficult to do? Jessica. Because when you're bending and you take a step back, like, there's less weight here, and because you're leaning on the wall, like, more of your weight goes over there. Lovely. Who else has got another, a nice explanation then? Ella. It's hard as well because you're leaning back on your tiptoes and your muscles are stretched and you can't really stand up while your muscles are that stretched when you're bending down. Well, Jessica and Ella are both right in a way. Look at Chris. When he first bends over, all his weight is in his feet and he can straighten up easily. But when he takes a step back, his centre of gravity shifts and some of the weight moves to his head. This means his tummy muscles aren't strong enough to straighten himself up. Chris is still stuck. Should we let him up? No! Stand. I've got a much better idea. 
Why don't we just use Chris as a nice new bookshelf? Come <laughs> on. Can't even read the books. That's brilliant. If anyone needs a book, they're over there. <laughs> this is really embarrassing. <laughs> I'm going to show you how bacteria are good for you. Look at all of these people. Now, they all look different, but they all have something in common. Every single one of them is covered in millions of bacteria. We all are. But don't worry, this is completely normal. In fact, we need bacteria to survive. Now, this is a Petri dish, named after its inventor, Julius Richard Petri. Doctors like me use these dishes to grow bacteria and see what lives on our bodies. That's what I'm going to do now, starting with our lips. Who's going to give me a kiss? Anyone going to give me a kiss? What I want is a kiss, a nice big kiss on that. What we're trying to do is look at what grows in people's mouths and things like that. Carrots. <laughs> Carrots? <laughs> Will anyone give you a kiss? I'll ask your girlfriend for a kiss. A more manly kiss from you, all right? <laughs> Can we get a nose pick as well? It's less exciting than a kiss. <gasps> Just going to see what comes out of people's noses and what comes out of their mouths. I can't do this in the street. I've got to up my nose. Come on. That's gross. He's a nice man, isn't he? Yeah. Oh, thanks. The kisses and nose swabs will now go off to be grown in a special laboratory. And after five days, it's time to see how the bacteria have blossomed. This is Dr Richard Drew, microbiologist and expert in all things gross. And now the kisses have gone all furry. Well, that's bacteria for you. <laughs> So what kind of bugs have we got here? We have a lot of streptococci, which is kind of the slightly greeny colour around the lips. But up here where their nose would have been, you can see the yellowy cogs growing. And these ones are more like a Staphylococcus aureus. Sounds like a dinosaur. It's completely normal to have these bugs in your mouth, so all of us have them. We could have got a kiss from everyone in Liverpool and they all would have grown these two bacteria. Absolutely. You might think it's disgusting, but bacteria are really useful. They're important to have. For example, we've got bugs in our gut and they help to digest food. And they fight disease too, by increasing the acidity in your gut to the point bad bacteria don't want to move in. So what about the weird things that live up our nose? This one we found a lot of E. coli and a lot of Staphylococcus as well. Now, E. coli can be dangerous. They do cause disease, but living up your nose or, commonly, living up your bottom is completely normal and completely safe. It's when it gets into blood or other bits of your body which shouldn't have it, like the brain or the joints, that it can cause problems. This one looks like cheesecake. Mmm, yummy. So our bodies are covered in bacteria, but that's not just normal. It's good because our bodies are amazing at protecting the bits that need to be protected, which is why kissing is fine. A bit disgusting, but fine. 